a member of the DATC media family. This is Dropped Among This Crowd, a podcast that dives into the music and community of improvisational progressive rock band, Humphreys McGee. Each episode will feature a rotating schedule of insightful show recaps, interviews with members of Team UM, as well as musicians who have been inspired by the band. This is your place for the latest news and happenings in the world of Humphreys McGee, keeping you informed on what's going on or where you can catch the next show. I'm your host, Sarah J. Thanks for joining me as we dive in. Are you prepared for what comes next? Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this week of Dropped Among This Crowd. I hope that you're able to check out the last fresh episode from June 6th, which featured a recap of Humphrey's recent appearance at 420 Fest at Centennial Olympic Park in Atlanta, Georgia, April 28th through May 1st. There is a link in the show notes if you'd like to give that a listen. Before we get into uh, this week's episode, I'm sure that you can maybe possibly still tell I'm having an issue with my sinuses since I came back from Colorado, um, which was interesting. Um... I didn't have an issue when I was there. Like, I know a bunch of people that, like, got sick when they were there, um, when they first arrived, but I was totally fine, but it was me coming back. Like, my sinuses were so dry, um, when I was there, and, like, my lips were really chapped and stuff, um, but when I came back, I don't know if it just had something to do with the difference in elevation and air and here in New York, um, I was totally fine the day I came in on Tuesday, but like Wednesday morning I woke up and I was like, oh my God, this is the worst feeling in the world. Um, you know, took a COVID test because um, I had some friends who uh, did get COVID uh, over the weekend, um, but it was not that. It was just this awful sinus infection and I lost my voice. Um, so I have a voice and I'm super excited to be able to record. Um, just kind of put it out there that my whole sinus thing is jacked up when I'm talking. So please forgive me as we go through this episode. (laughs) This week on the show, we're going to dive into this year's Summer Camp Music Festival, May 26th through 29th. A whole bunch to get to for sure. But Before we get into that, I also want to remind everybody that DATC Media is now on Patreon, featuring all sorts of different tiers with lots of fun perks. I actually am thinking about um, adding an extra perk to some of those tiers after uh, this past weekend in summer camp. uh, with the photographers that we've added to the team, I'm thinking about adding a photo to the tiers. So check out what is already being offered and see how you can support the many sources of Umphrey's fan content coming from DATC Media. Your awesome support helps this show, Crooked Conversations, the Umphreys Wow Show, and the other awesome things uh, that I have in the works for this community help them continue and come to life. So thank you so much for all of your support. It really, it really, really, really means a lot. Um, That was one of my favorite parts about uh, Summer Camp Music Festival um, any year, but especially this year. I know I've talked about it on the show and and many of you listening, if I know you in real life, air quotes, I don't know, um, you know, you know that I'm going through a really difficult time in my life. The past six weeks specifically have been like pretty crazy Um, going through a divorce and all of the things that go along with that and kind of moving forward 
in my life with myself and my kids and all of that. So when I had some people come up to me at summer camp and there was one guy in particular, please forgive me, I can't remember your name, um, but you came up to me during the dopapod sets and I was sitting there with my son waiting for Eric. Oh my God, I love you so much, Eric. And we're just going to get into how amazing that whole thing was. Um, <laughs> um, but you came up to me at the Dopapod set and told me what the show meant to you. And I can't tell you what that meant to me. So I, if you're listening, I just want to say thank you um, for coming and saying that to me. Um, because it really meant a lot to me. Um, because this is really special to me. And I just love the fact that other people listen to it. And just, you know, now that I have people that are just helping in bigger ways. And everything's expanding. And it's just really awesome. Um, anyways, but especially while I've been going through this really difficult uh you know, time. So I just wanted to shout him out, whoever you are, hopefully you're listening and, uh, and say thank you because that meant a lot. Um, you know, and just everybody that comes up and says, Hey, and, and a hug or even just a handshake or whatever. Um, it really, it really means a lot to me. Um, so thank you. I, I love meeting you guys. Um, it is a little, <laughs> to get used to. I've had a couple people want to take pictures and, you know, so that's something that is, is new to me for sure. Um, but thank you. I mean, really just thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, thank you to Leslie, um, from summer camp team. Um, your last name is escaping me right now, but thank you for approving my press and believing in DATC media and giving us a second press credential for my audio engineer, Eric. I love you so much. Like it was so awesome spending time with you. Um, and getting to travel with you and then, you know, being in the hotel and editing pictures and just doing all these things that I, some of it, you know, I thought one day would happen. And some of it is just like, wow, I never could have imagined. And this is so awesome. So just thank you so much, Eric, for everything. <laughs> I love you so much. And it was so awesome to be able to experience expanding the company like this with you because it's only going to be happening more and more. And I'm super excited. And Eric took some pretty bomb ass photos. Like, seriously, maybe you're following him on socials or whatever. Um, check out the posts for this episode. Um, we'll feature pictures that Eric took. Um, I took some pictures. Pictures are not really my forte. Um, I really preferred using my camera, um, but I will admit I just like being up in the pit. Um, <laughs> but he really was fucking killing it, and he killed it with photos of his friends from the weekend and just candid shots of people at the festival um, and other bands. It was great to have him because he wanted to stay really late and see these other bands and would catch these other things, and it was nice to have the other person to go and do those things when maybe I was feeling tired and I just was done and I didn't want to be around the festival anymore. Great thing about having the hotel. Um, you could take a break from it for a minute. Um, but yeah, it, it was really great to have that extra set, um, of feet on the ground, I guess you could say. Um, and also to not have to worry about, um, getting pictures, you know, sometimes I do, but also sometimes I like to just not have my phone out at the Umfree show. I try to bring coverage, but at the same time, I just want to enjoy and absorb too. So it's nice to have that for sure. And also nice to have somebody to, you know, kind of rehash the, the show out with. Um, so that was just so awesome. I could talk all day about it. Um, but yeah, that was, that was so much fun, Eric. And I'm so excited for more of that. Yes. Um, 
It was also great to see just so many friends. I mean, come on, it's summer camp. It's like a family reunion. Um, but it was also great to see the Much Obliged table and Benji. That was the first time we ever met. Um, we got to rage a little bit uh, Saturday night, I think. I can't remember. Um, but it was super awesome to finally meet him and to see his table. Um, if you don't know, Much Obliged is the sober fan community, um, an amazing, awesome group of people, um, which I am proud to be a member of. Um, I go to Al-Anon meetings and they offer just so much awesomeness to the community. Um, if you are a subscriber of Crooked Conversations, there is a submission uh, from a member of their community in the issue. And Benji was also on episode 101 of this show talking more about all of that and himself. So check that out. Link in show notes. And also, it was so great to see Ashley from Groove Safe. I love you, girl, so much. She's so amazing. And it was so great to see her um, at Red Rocks, too. Um, she was there tabling. And yeah, I, I just love her so much. I uh, Her whole thing. And if you don't know what Groove Safe is, you don't know anything about Ashley, check out episode 188. Um, yeah, she's doing some incredible, incredible work. So just thank you to everybody. Just an all-around great weekend. Um, it was rainy in the beginning, um, so there was some mud to contend with at first. Um, but, I mean, that's going to happen. It's summer camp. You kind of have to expect. I don't know. Yeah, it's just like, okay, well, it started out muddy, but the rest of the weekend was really great. And Sunday it was hot, but it wasn't hot like it was the year before. Um, so I think overall um, it was good. It was a good, good weekend. Um, musically, we'll get to that now. Um, I did make a highlights playlist from the weekend, which you will find a link for in the show notes. You'll also find a link for my 2022 highlights list containing all the tunes I thought were highlights from the year so far as well as my Hall of Fame contenders list. Fun fact from the weekend, no covers were played. Make sure you check out the summer edition of Crooked Conversations, which will feature a few page spread about this year's summer camp music festival, um, set lists, a um, bunch of photos from Eric and I, and more from the weekend. So. Check out our Patreon page for more about how you can snag yourself a copy of that. When it hits the streets, you know where to find the link. So first up for Umphreys for the weekend would be their VIP set in the Red Barn. And this would be Jake's first show back in front of an audience. and. He was completely locked in and focused all weekend, and I even noticed that, you know, during those first two sets in the Red Barn, um, he was really, really locked in in particular. Didn't make a whole shit ton of eye contact with um, the crowd as the time went on on the weekend he did. Um, but when he first came out and played those first two shows in the red bar and he was very, very, very focused into, um, you know, what was happening and paying very close attention to, um, watching Bayless's hands, particularly, I noticed a lot of, um, and just very laser focused and, all about business, um, and was completely on fire all weekend. It was so great to have them back together and just playing, and it just it felt really good. <laughs> it felt really good, and I needed that. So it was great, um, and, and they're just on a steady just incline of that for sure. Um, but, yeah, they were really, really on fire during summer camp. It was very nice to see. 
So this VIP set in the Red Barn and all request for the UMVIPers. And this is actually available on Nugs for Relisten, which I'm super stoked about because I could not stop talking about the Porch Ninja Porch, but also the Fire Jam in Chemwalk 2. I thought that was just really hot. Um, similar skin would open this VIP set and I will say, <laughs> no offense to anyone that may have voted for this, because it is always interesting to me when I hear that somebody hasn't heard a song, even with a high show number count. Um, it's really interesting to me some of the songs that people haven't heard. So no offense to anybody who hasn't gotten a Sim skin um, and really wanted to hear it. It's a great tune. Um, but I feel like this was just a missed chance, you know, when it was an all request by the fans. I mean, maybe there were other votes that were winning and the band just like vetoed it and they themselves put similar skin in there is like, a, yeah, we're not playing what you asked us to play, which is very possible. Um, I just felt like there's a time and a place for similar skin and opening up the VIP all request was not it. So, sorry, not sorry, but <laughs> I don't want to shit on it completely. Um, it, it did have some very nice legs to stand on when they let it off its leash to wander into the unknown slightly before three and a half-ish. They let that one enjoy about four minutes off on its own devices before pulling it back into the driveway. Cemetery Walk next, followed by Chem Walk 2. With that fire jam, like I said, I keep talking about this one. It starts to venture into the cave slightly after three minutes, confidently trudging forward into the unknown, really getting into the grimy of it about a minute and a half later. Jake just ripping it open and resonating way out, taking it one step further as it continues to press that gas and just so very nicely lands back into Chem Walk 2. Chef's Kiss, for sure. And this would be the first tune from the weekend that would find its way onto my Scamp 2022 highlights list. And like I mentioned, a link for that is in the show notes. The Front Porch Sammy with Ninja Stuffed Inside next. Porch would build the most beautiful and hopeful momentum. This is the moment that I personally got a little emotional. Slipping into something a little sexier slightly after four minutes. Sinking into a perfect let your mind wander jam as it continues on. Opening and soaring with hopefulness tucked inside this jam. And this is one of those where just shit in the world is good for right now. <laughs> I love those moments inside a jam. Landing very nicely right back into front porch proper, slightly before 10 and a half. Leaving porch in the dust for now, taking a detour and building itself back together into Ninja. Last played at Chris's house back in early 2021 on February 6th, but the last time it was played in front of an audience, 12 27 19, during the last New Year's Eve run in Denver. I didn't even realize that until when I was doing the notes for this episode, and I'm like, wait a minute, that was the last New Year's run. Because 2020 didn't happen, and then last year, Miami was canceled. So they haven't done a New Year's show since 2019. That's pretty crazy to think about. Also, I found out after the fact that Ninja was actually my next not seen live after Roulette um, that I finally got the second night of Boston. That was such an awesome weekend, tabled with Groove Safe that weekend, too. Um... So yeah, Ninja was actually my next not seen. Um, so that had to be like the shortest chase ever. <laughs> I didn't even realize it that they played it. So that's cool. Um, so next up for me is Space Funk Booty. So that's going to be fucking exciting. 
<clears throat> they so very nicely went from that ninja and stepped right back into the conclusion of Front Porch to close out the UMVIP set. And I did also throw that Front Porch Sammy on my Scamp highlight playlist. A little later that night, the Late Night Red Barn set. There is video of this whole set on YouTube, which I will throw a link for in the show notes if you're interested in giving that a watch, which I recommend that you do. Bathing Digits would open the set, followed by Maybe Someday and The Fuzz. Morning Song, Speak Up, and Ringo coming out next in that order. Speak Up would find a spot on my Scamp Highlights list. I thought that Nestled Inside was one of the massive jams from the entire weekend. Beginning its dive in slightly before five minutes, mechanically coming to life about three minutes later, robotically charging forward full of determination, falling down the rabbit hole about 11 minutes, coming back to reality, tickling back into Speak Up very briefly before wandering off again. The aforementioned Ringo next. This would also find a spot on my Scamp Highlights list, heading off on a nice wander about two minutes, taking no time getting to the griminess of it, rounding the corner and finding some more sensual vibes about three minutes later, gathering some confidence as it builds, Slamming back into Ringo proper slightly before seven and a half-ish. Chris laying the path as the guys decide where we want to head. Metallically strapping on our dancing shoes and venturing off into space. Breaking through to clear skies about 12 minutes. Pivoting slightly. Gaining more momentum and confidence about a minute later. Sliding it into home. Six minutes later. A thousand places to see before you die. Next, last seen July 24th, 2021 in New Haven. That was a good two nights. That was a lot of fun last year. I recommend listening to actually the DBK sandwich from that is really, really good. Push the pig inside there. Anyway, (laughs) followed by Mad Love that they said they weren't going to play during the VIP set. Instead, going into that front porch, Sammy, love, 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 mad love, and happy 100th to Kelly, followed by a nice bottom half, also on my Scamp Highlights list. Really love the way they drove this one. Just a really nice, uplifting jam. And pay the snucka with a You Really Got Me Now um, by Van Halen, is that? Um, that was a fake out to close out the late night Red Barn set. Um, it does cut off on Nugs, um, before it gets to that part of the song. I saw some people saying that it had to do with the licensing rights or something. I'm not sure. Um, but it does cut off before the end. So if you listen to that and were wondering, um, it's not you. Doom Flamingo would play next in the Late Night Red Barn. Their set list would read Stay, Need to Feed, Untraditional, Telepathy, Lux Noir, Love on Hold, Ready to Mingle, Moonlight, Along for the Ride, Evil, 303, Replicant, Mad World, and an encore of Runway. If you have not seen Doom Flamingo yet, you like you need to do that. It's incredible. All right, so on to Friday. Day two for the team would get started with Kick the Cat. That was my first time finally getting to see them live, and I was really impressed. Um, I mean, I'd seen videos and whatever. They did some live streams um, during 2020. Um, so I've seen some stuff, but this was the first time that I had seen them live and they were so good their guitar player Chris Seibolt I think that's how you say his last name um he's really phenomenal um they're all really good I mean it just a really incredible band um and just proof that Chris doesn't play with shitty musicians (laughs) you know like he everybody he plays with is really really talented because he's really talented um but 
I highly suggest that you go and see Kick the Cat if you have not. I definitely will make it a point to see them. Um, they are really good. I was really, really impressed. Um, sadly, I don't have a set list. I looked around. Um, I did not hear back from them by the time I was needed to record this. So I don't have a set list from them or their late night um, with Liquid Stranger set. I know they played that later Friday night into Saturday morning. Um, but yeah, those two sets, the one I saw was incredible. The late night set I did not see, but I heard it was also really good. Um, so yeah, definitely check out Kick the Cat. Um, Queen is Doomed was next and was one of my favorite moments of the whole weekend. Kanika is such a queen herself. I mean, how much have I gushed about her on the show already? Um, I already gushed about the Queen is Doom set from 420 Fest. So getting to see this live was so incredible. Just goosebumps and tears. There were tears. I mean, she really, 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 really pays wonderful tribute to Freddie Mercury and even musically, like Doom Flamingo as a band. I think Freddie Mercury and, you know, probably queen collectively but freddie mercury i think would have really loved um doom flamingo as a whole so i just love that they are doing this um and i saw on a recent doom set that they are incorporating queen songs into their regular rotation of songs so that's awesome as hell um one of my favorite parts about this set actually was being able to see joel rage it side stage <laughs> he was so into it because i know that he is a huge queen fan um but also because of my daughter marley who also loves queen and all the lessons that they've done queen has been the majority of the stuff that they've learned and Joel was super excited that she loves Queen so much and that she wanted to learn these songs on the piano um, because he's such a fan. So it was awesome to um, watch him rock out to these songs that, I mean, I the Queen songs, you know, so it was cool to just see Joel rocking out to him anyways. Um, but it was the songs that they had been working on during their their classes and stuff together. So that was just super, super awesome. Um, I will be honest, I don't remember the full set list. I didn't write it down all in order. Um, but looking at their 420 set list, I remember what they played. It's Scamp, but it's just not in order. So this is what they played just not in this order. <laughs> Under Pressure, I Want to Break Free, Fat Bottom Girls, Somebody to Love, Killer Queen, I Want It All, Another One Bites the Dust, Bohemian Rhapsody, We Are the Champions, Radio Gaga, and Don't Stop Me Now. Um, I don't, there may have been one other tune, um, but yeah, incredible. I hope they do some more of that for sure. All right, on to Umphrey's Friday Night Set. This night was pretty ridiculous, and I think was my favorite night of the whole weekend. This evening would reveal itself as a massive all-in-time sandwich. The first part of the story would dance off jubilantly, slightly after four minutes, slipping into a sexy breathe by Floyd Jam about six minutes later. That takes its time to be revealed, so very delicately undressing very nicely and gently teases and dabbles, but never fully goes all in, dancing off and leaving all in time in the rear view for now. Crucial taunt and I don't know what I want would come out next, followed by remind me. This version would find a seat on my Scamp Highlights playlist. Venturing off about three minutes, really getting into the meat of the jam about four minutes later getting a little interstellar as it wanders off, cooling its heels for a minute, aggressively building, charging full steam ahead slightly before 10 minutes, putting on the brakes, pivoting, and driving right into the sex metal part of the song. Higgins, next. This would also find a place on my highlights playlist. 
floating away dreamily slightly before three and a half. Love how far this one goes off its leash. For about four minutes, they let it go off before boomeranging back into Higgins proper. An absolutely ridiculous hurt bird bath to close out the first part of this Friday night set with nice foreplay of small strides, 14 minutes. They tease the fuck out of it. It's, it's in there. But nope. We're not going there. We're going to erupt right back into bath. Like, that was like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> I thought we were going to see the debut of Small Strides Saturday night second set, but it wasn't ready yet. Um, I did hear them mess around with it um, before the... Uh, UMVIP set on Thursday when we were walking in to go pick up our press or it was after we picked up our press credentials and we were walking into the festival um I heard them messing around with it in the red barn um so I was like oh maybe we'll get it Saturday night second set would be great um but nope they tease it in that hurt bird bath um but it wasn't it wasn't ready that weekend We'd get a taste of it um, on Dumb Tour in early June, and we'd get to witness the full treatment at Red Rocks. Um, There is a YouTube video of that if you haven't seen it, and we'll get to that in a future Red Rocks episode, Um, but it was awesome. Anyways, (laughs) second set would be a major highlight from the weekend for me personally. A five-song set with a 22-minute standalone mantis. Yes, fucking please. Pretty much this whole set would find a spot on my highlights list. We'd get things started with the triple wide, shaking it off and dancing according to its own means slightly before three and a half, setting its sights on the sky as it continues, soaring to a more even level before nine and a half, trudging forward, getting a little tipsy on its way out the door, heading into that 22-minute standalone mantis that I mentioned a minute ago. And have I said this on the air before? I feel like I have. But 2022 is definitely the year of the mantis. It pops up a couple of times on my highlights list from the whole year if you take a scroll through there. But let us not forget that incredible version from Detroit earlier in the year. You will, of course, find this scamp version on my highlights playlist, but I'm pretty damn confident that the one from Detroit will make it to my Hall of Fame ballot. Honestly, when it was over, I'm standing there and I'm just like, that's Hall of Fame, Mantis. Just saying. Anyway, back to this Mantis. Full of attitude, it would stomp right off slightly before six and a half. And at about 7.33, it really felt like a Billy Strings tease for just like 10-ish seconds. It wasn't a super long thing, but it felt like it was a Billy Strings tease. I can't figure out what tune I'm thinking of, or maybe it's just a repeated little like thing. I don't know but very familiar to the point where like every time I heard it, it made me think. So I don't know if you hear it and you can think of what it is, please tell me. Dropping right into something a little cooler at about nine minutes, bursting into a smile inducing jam slightly before 12 and a half is when it starts to get a little air, really reaching peak elevation about a minute later, falling back to earth about 15 and a half and tumbling back into Mantis. This was so damn good that the next day when I was looking at the set again, I was like, damn, when did they finish Mantis? And then I'm like, oh yeah. (laughs) It was one meaty as fuck serving. Like, duh, it was one big giant Mantis. I mean, that shit was legitimately still pulsing after we were done. The, like the song when you're listening to it. It's heartbeat growing more and more like something out of an Edgar Allan Poe poem. It was incredible. 
and then it would stumble into Phil's farm, dancing off full of swagger slightly after three minutes, getting more confident in its game as it matures about six minutes, where I personally yelled a nice fuck yeah, Joel. Stasic holding down that funk underneath the whole time, too. Overall, this jam is a lot of fun to get down to. You'll also find this on my 2022 list. My only complaint about it, I didn't totally love the way they brought it to an end and then pivoted, kind of jerked in a way back into Phil's. That's all I got to say in complaint about that. A standalone bridgeless and next also on my highlights list from the weekend. This would contain a really nice fatty jam, one that I've personally come back to a few times. Give it a listen for sure. Um, one of those, again, just everything is aligned and all right in the world for right this minute jams. So here for that. <laughs> and the conclusion of that all in time that started the evening would close out Friday night at Scamp. And apparently Friday evening, there was a change in the schedule at the campfire stage. Blue Star Radiation was supposed to play. Instead, it turned into a Mo and Friends set featuring a bunch of different guests, but Bayless would come out and do a cover of the Super Tramp tune, Bloody Well Right. That's one of my I Want to Hear Umphrey's covers. Um, They've done it, and I would love to see them do it live myself. Um, Well, that and Goodbye Stranger, the end part of that, just it leaves such a open canvas for them to just, oh, oh, man. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Bayless sitting in on that was probably pretty cool. Like, I love Mo too. And I've only seen Bayless sit in with Mo one time. It was Mo Down, like 2009 or something. I think it was like 2009. Um, and he came out and sat in on She. Um, that was really awesome because that's one of my favorite Mo songs. Um, so yeah, I haven't seen any video and this, I kind of heard rumblings like the next morning and then found some information on the scamp Facebook page. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that was pretty cool. Um, and then I did already mention the kick the cat late night with liquid stranger. So that brings us to Saturday night and my 100th show. And thank you to Kelly for the awesome gift. She gave me a pair of sunglasses that say Jake Love on them. And I've been wearing them everywhere. Like I wear them in my regular life. <laughs> I wear them to like the post office and the grocery store and stuff. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, I just love them so much and they fit my face really great too. So thank you. Anyway, back to Saturday night and my 100th show would start with The Floor, followed by Nothing Too Fancy, which found a spot on my highlights list. I love how this started. Piecing and coming together, blasting off slightly after three and a half, cooling it way the hell down about 10 minutes, creeping its way in, very sexy, undressing as it dances on, revealing layer after sensual layer, gathering momentum and driving off about two minutes later, continuing full of confidence, bringing it to a more even level slightly after 16 minutes, coasting out and leaving nothing too fancy in the dust for now, revealing August, and again, I'm going to mention the Umphrey's Wow Show, that has recently dug into this tune. Side A and Side B, both parts, are out now for your enjoyment. Side B was such a huge episode that it was released in two parts. So a whole hell of a lot of August discussion for you. Side A, you'll hear from Bayless and Ryan on the tune. Side B... Part one features Joel's insight, including what he had to say about the band recently playing it at 420 Fest without Jake. And side B part two hosts Rob Turner, Jimmy Knowledge, and I sharing our bronze, silver, and gold versions. That was a lot of fun. I 
uncovered some treasure and share it in the episode. Um, so definitely check that out. They've also done side A and B of Hurt Bird Bath, um, and the guys are working on DBK right now. So very exciting. Uh, listen anywhere you podcast. Anyway, back to this. Um, I didn't ask for anything for my 100th show. I just wanted to leave it up to them and what they wanted to play. Um, that happened for my 50th show during New Year's 2018. Um, and then they played that band on the run. And that was awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I was very thrilled about getting it August at my 100th show. Um, it's one of my favorite Umphrey songs. It's some of my favorite Umphrey's lyrics, which I share in the episode of the Wow Show Why. Um, it's also my birth month and a fun random of no importance fact. They also played August at my very first show, which was May 31st, 2007. And the anniversary of that was only three days after my 100th show. Um, so it was just this really awesome thing of time and all this other stuff. Um, so I was super, super happy that they played August, honestly. Um, I wouldn't have even, like, thought to ask for that. Um, but because they played it, it was just, like, it was exactly what... I, I needed to hear and to kind of have that retrospective connection um, with my Hunter show and just all the things. So it was perfect, but I digress. Anyway, back to this version from Scamp, taking a minute to ocularly decide where it wants to head, venturing off full of glee, drenched in all sorts of comfortable sexiness as it continues on. I will say there is something very familiar about the riff that Bayless was playing underneath this as it adventured on specifically like five minutes. I can't place it, but it just felt really familiar to me. So again, if you listen to that, please let me know because that's really familiar to me. Whoppy Sprayberry next. And a huge congrats to Mitch and Amy who were raging next to me on Friday and Saturday night. Well, after Whoppy started, Mitch turns to me and said, can you take a video? Because I'm about to get engaged. And I'm like, uh, yeah. You may have seen the video on the show's social media pages. I posted it a few days after the festival. Such an awesome moment. My 100th show and an engagement. I'm super grateful to have been asked to capture such a special moment for them. Like, nobody's ever asked me that before, and I don't think I've ever been, like, witness to a random proposal at a show or something like that before. So, like, that was super cool, and we were on the rail and everything. Like, that was really, really neat. <clears throat> so thank you so much for asking me to capture that moment for you. Like, that was really awesome. Um and I'm very excited to be officiating their wedding next year um, between the Saturday night sets. So that's going to be super, super cool. And yeah, stay tuned for more on that. <laughs> so back to this WAPI. It would adventure off slightly after four minutes. They really allowed this one to wander off its leash, reeling right back in about five minutes later. Malchais Odyssey next, followed by Suxity, dedicated to Mel and Steve. If you know, you know. <laughs> I have mentioned this before about this tune. Not a fan, but I do love the jam vehicle that it is. They allowed this one to nicely go for a scenic Sunday afternoon drive, about four minutes, dramatically building into the conclusion of Nothing Too Fancy to close out the first set on Saturday night. The silent type to open the second set, sinking comfortably into its jam slightly after three minutes, aggressively ripping the sky open about two minutes later, pivoting, Joel taking our hand as we rage along the path back toward the silent type proper. Miss Tinkles next. This is also on my highlights list. I just love Tinkles anyways, and that jam is just. Oh, yeah, so good. Definitely check that one out. Wife Soup followed by Dump City. 
I really love the hopefulness of this as it really builds about six, seven minutes. Evening out about a minute later, contorting its way back into Dump City. I thought this was a big, fat highlight from the entire weekend. This I may move over to my 2022 Hall of Fame contenders list. I don't know if I mentioned this, um, but that's a different playlist. I have of songs um, that to me are already finding a place on my ballot, no question. Um, I may have mentioned that when we talked about Mantis. Um, I think there's like eight songs on there right now. Um, but you, I'll link that in the show notes too if you're interested. Um, but those are songs that I'm just like, this is definitely going on my ballot. Um, and I think this Dump City is going to go over there. It's a really, really massive um, highlight from the weekend, I believe. Attachments next. Surveying the area about seven minutes and deciding where it would like to take a nice afternoon stroll after leaving attachments proper in the dust. Booth love after that with Rob from Mo literally sitting in, I hate that word, but literally sitting in two crew guys. Um, I think maybe a Robbie was like standing there supervising, but I think the two guys were from somebody else's crew. Um, but they brought out a small couch, almost even like the back bench seat from a car, um, that Rob and Ryan both sat down on. Um, I feel like that has to be like the first actual sit in, like in history. And somebody just came and sat in. <laughs> An encore to close out Saturday evening at Scamp. Resolution that would meld very nicely into glory. Saturday night, Red Barn Late Night, Talking McGee. They would play the national anthem by Radiohead, Come Together by The Beatles, Voodoo Child by Hendrix, Sirius by Bonobo, Immigrant Song by Zeppelin, and Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Do you create really rad fan art? Is your band wanting to get into the ears of umfreaks? Maybe your small business provides an awesome service and you'd like some like-minded clients to work with. Are you looking to hire some music-loving folks for your team? Perhaps you've had an idea for an umfreaks themed podcast or something else that you just know this community would love, but you weren't sure where to start. Dropped Among This Crowd Media Company wants to help. With space available for your Umphreys related show idea, social media promotion of your band, ad spots across the network, and so much more, Dropped Among This Crowd Media Company can help you be seen, heard, and reach tons of fellow Umphreaks, musicians, and other kind folks. Want to know more or have questions? Shoot an email to sarah at datcmediacompany.com. And so that brings us to the Sunday afternoon set. Like I said, hot for sure, but not as hot as it has been. So I will take that. Last year was a oven. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, so I was really glad that it wasn't that bad. This year it was like comfortable actually. This final set of the weekend for the guys would start with Second Self, followed by Push the Pig. I did throw that on my Scamp Highlights list. I just love the hell out of that song. I mean, that's got to be probably in like my top three. So I just, I love it. <laughs> Bad Friday, this would also find a spot on my Highlights list. Letting it saunder off confidently slightly after four minutes. Women, Wine, and Song next with a very, very, very nice segue into the Lanier. Oh, I really love that. Like, when they just went into that, you're just like, ooh, yes, guys. Oh. 
<laughs> you're just like, oh, you're like looking around to see if like anybody else noticed like how fucking flawless and stupendous that was. You're just like, everybody else saw that, right? Everybody like experienced that majestic, like, yeah, okay, cool. Cause that was really, really good. The jam inside Women, Wine, and Song was nice as well, so that's why these two found a spot on my highlights list. The Lanier would feature a Wallet's Worth tease starting to take place about six and a half, giving a glimpse of where we were going next, although at the time, who knew if that was true? I mean, see what happened in Hurt Bird Bath with Small Strides. Because they do shake it off for about a minute before creeping in and fully committing into Wallet's Worth. Slacker next, featuring Future Man, slipping into some serious Middle Eastern trance vibes and transporting us to another time and space in the depths of that jam. You'll also find that on my highlights list for sure. That was, oh, that was a lot of fun. It Doesn't Matter Next, followed by Double F and Day Nurse to close out the Sunday day set at Scamp. That Day Nurse would come in at only like four minutes. Um, So I jokingly said that it felt more like a daylight savings nurse. So yeah, that's that's my cheesy humor. (laughs) Um, some other random stuff from the weekend. Chris with La Special doing Primus May 29th from 2 to 4 a.m. at the Soul Shine Tent. Chris would sit in on Jerry was a race car driver. There is a post on La Special's Instagram with a photo from Scam with more about that set if you want to check it out. And then Joel and Chris would join Everyone Orchestra along with Mike Ganser, Jeremy from Pigeons, and a whole bunch of other people um, for an afternoon Make a Difference Soul Shine celebration set inside the Red Barn, I believe that was. And finally, Death Kings. And this is also how I ended my scamp weekend I went back to the hotel and took a shower and needed to get some rest. Um, But it was so nice to finally catch them. They had played here in Buffalo um, when Umphreys canceled the show, but I had COVID, so I couldn't go to the Death King show, which sucked. Um, And then in Boston, I didn't go because it was such a long day and I'd lost my voice from tabling with Groove Safe. So I just went back to my hotel and went to bed. Um, But It was so awesome to finally be able to catch them. And I mean, they're pretty much a Buffalo band. Ganser, Karuba, and Brett Robertson are all from here. Um, And I will link the episodes. Um, I chatted with the guys in the band, and I'll link those in the show notes. Except for Brett, who has not been on the show yet. But I had the pleasure of chatting with him um, in our hotel lobby Monday morning before we left. We chatted, we sat there for like an hour and we realized that we live like legitimately around the block from each other. Um, His band Fernway just had their album release party um, last night, uh, the day I'm recording this. I think it was like last night um, at one of my favorite local venues, the Tom Ballroom. Uh, We discovered we have the the same favorite uh, local coffee shop. Um... Little Black Hearts coffee. Um, it's just, it was really awesome to get all these like hometown connections. We're in the middle of, of Illinois and we're talking about this. And, you know, so to get to know him and how he came, it became incorporated with Death Kings and everything else and all of that. So I'm really excited to have him on the show. Um, so I'm working on coordinating that to make that happen because that's going to be an awesome conversation to bring to you guys. He's such an awesome, awesome dude. Um, all of all of them in the band are just awesome, awesome dudes. So anyways, they're just a really, really rad band. And, you know, it's not my usual genre of music that I listen to, but they're really damn good at playing this genre of music. And I love to see Stasic in this musical outfit. I mean, obviously, Umphreys, how many times have I seen them? And now I've seen Doom Flamingo a, a handful of times. Um, so it's really cool to see him in this musical outfit. I mean, all of them really. I mean, obviously, Ganser and Aqueous and Mikey Karuba, 
formerly of Turquoise. Um, I actually went to school with Mikey Karuba. Um, so I've been seeing him play drums since eighth grade. Um, so it was really neat to see this different side of all of them and how well they really embraced it. And what a response, uh, the, the crowd too. Like it was really, really awesome. So definitely check them out too, if you get a chance. Um, and they do have an album out, you know, anywhere you stream music. So definitely check that out too. All right. So that's everything I have for this week of the show. Thank you so much for sticking with me for like what the past hour and uh, listening to me yak about summer camp with my throat that is probably going to be done after this. Um, so thanks for bearing with that as well. This is the best it's been since last week, Wednesday. So thanks for putting up with my throat and thanks for sticking around and listening to everything about summer camp. There are a shit ton of links in the show notes for anything I may have referenced throughout this episode, including where you can listen to these shows from Scamp and links for any videos, any interviews that I mentioned as well. Links will be there. Highlights playlist, all of that. Also in the show notes, you'll find tons of links for the DATC vault stuffed with all sorts of other past episodes to binge on. We're creeping in close on 200 episodes, which blows my mind. It just means there's a ton of content for you to listen to. You'll also find links for where you can check out DATC Media on Patreon and just so much more. So take a scroll all through there. Lots and lots of stuff in those show notes. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you around these parts in two weeks. We're going to start dissecting the summer tour and telling you what my highlights are from what the guys have played so far. So I will see you around these parts in two weeks. Mad love.